<clears throat> ah, the bare necessities. The bare necessities. The simple bare necessities of entrepreneurship is what we're going to be talking about. You know, this song was written in 1967 by Terry Gilkson, and the vocals were Bruce Reitherman and Phil Harris. And uh, there's actually a lot of deep entrepreneurial wisdom in the Bare Necessities song. And uh, it actually is B-A-R-E, um, but we just kind of thought we'd have fun with it with the Bare Necessities with the bear, because there's like a double yeah. meaning there. So I'm yeah. Vic with the other side of intentional mentoring. I'm the wizard guy. Like I just got my wizard t-shirt, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all about having fun here at intentional mentoring. And this session, we're going to go deep into all the essential things you need to be an entrepreneur in today's high speed digital society. And also there's some mindset stuff that most of you are not doing that is essential. So, Take it away, Peter, and share a little bit about what today's going to be about. Yeah, great. Well, you, you know, you think about the bare necessities. Um, that uh, that song from the Jungle Book and uh, the the bear Blue what was his name Baloo? I Baloo, think his name yeah. was Baloo. Yeah, he was singing that song, and uh, they they actually made a, a live version of that, um, meaning not animated. And uh, you might think it's B E A R, but that's B A R E necessities. And um, uh, you might sometimes you can find the lyrics of that song, and, and yeah, it's it right does here. have. Oh, there it is. Okay, and um, simple bare necessities. Forget about the worries and your strife. Now you know, um, I've always been under the mantra of you know don't take things so seriously, <laughs> you know, um, because you don't want to get too high and you don't want to get too low, right? Because there's always going to be a, a yin and yang. There's going to be positive, negative, and you know that's the the way the universe works with the law of polarity, back and forth. If if you're having tough times right now, you know there's going to be a swing around to the other side because that's the way things work. As long as you keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing, the universe responds with uh, with in kind uh, for the effort that you're putting in. So that's what really the universe really wants. It wants the effort that you're going to be putting in. As long as the effort is the proper effort. It's like learning to play golf. If you raise your hand, if you learn to play golf, or you try to play golf. Um, I've tried to play many, many times. So I've just known and learned that uh, how bad I am at playing golf because <laughs> I maybe play once every year or two uh, just to recognize that I, I'm terrible at it. But uh, only well, no, because I don't play enough. People who play with you feel good. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I get you know five or six good whacks at it, but. Um, that's that's the one you know you get five or six good hits that makes you want to come back and play some more. But it, it's you know it's the uh, the chit chat along the way, having a great time, and a lot of fun. Um, but my point was, and remember, I, I think I, I had done a, a written piece on playing golf and like putting and things like that. And what you want to do is you can practice to play golf to try to swing and hit the ball very very far. But if you're practicing the long the wrong swing over and over and over again, it's not going to make you better. Right. So you want to make sure that not only are you practicing, but you're practicing the right techniques to be able to become better. And that's what we try to do here with intentional mentoring is you're relying on our wisdom and our years of experience and tried and true methods. Because what we do here is we're showing you practical uh, things that we're doing right now that are working. We'll show you numbers, you know, and then maybe not every single session. We're going to show you numbers, but we'll show you numbers of what's happening. And um, because we want you to say, okay, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what's working. This is what's not working. Let's swing the golf club this way instead of trying so many ways the wrong way. And you're really getting nowhere. You're just gonna be you're just gonna be really really good at playing golf wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah. So here we want you to be really really good at the the game of affiliate marketing and network marketing, and so on, doing it correctly to be able to um, start getting some traction. And uh, when you start getting that traction, then you start saying, hey, you know, I think I can really do this. Yeah, absolutely. And and one of the things that you want to start doing is listening to the right information that's backed by science, mm -hmm. not backed by someone's opinion, because a lot of this stuff um, is, is universal. Let me talk about that universal thing that uh, is dealing with our attention span, okay? Um, there is a TED talk that really, really impacted me, and I'm going to share with you how you can get it. You can go to my channel, 
at YouTube called youtube.com slash Mr. Hatman. I just rebranded myself as Mr. Hatman because that's that emoji of the hat. And it's recognizable. So the, the nice thing about that emoji is people recognize it. It's very familiar. It's very safe. And th there you can see we have our live stream running. But there's also the for your first million views, the Tube Relevance beginner course. And there are four videos. They're short. Just watch them. That'll give you a little bit of a foundation. And then there's a longer version inside of my software, Sosi Snap. But what I want to draw you to is this one playlist I just added to. If you go to playlists, I just added one called TED Talks Worth Watching. I'm going to be adding more there later. But over the next span of time, we're going to be covering this particular one by Chris Bailey. And I just ordered his book. It's going to be here on Wednesday. So we're going to talk about it on Thursday. Um, I also got his audio book and everything like that. How to get your brain to focus. Okay. One of the things he says in here, which is very, very crucial, okay, is that we have this, you know, Peter called it focusitis, anti-focusitis, right? We're not, we don't have the ability to focus. Well, there's actually a reason for that. It's because our brain is accustomed to 40-second bite-sized chunks of data. It's so accustomed to that that it's addicted to it. OK, and so the what he talks about is that the advent of the mobile phone has caused us to consume content in 40 second chunks. It's not it was funny. I, I, I I've been you know, you and I talked about the uh, alleged Microsoft study with, you know, attention span. Human attention span is seven or eight seconds. One of my colleagues in Canada pointed out that, guess what, Vic, that's not true. And he actually was the person that proved that it wasn't true. It was a myth and it went viral. It wasn't even true. There was no such thing as a Microsoft study. It's an example of how a rumor, which is not true, goes viral and then people think it is true. This guy actually did the real data and he found that the problem is not that we human beings don't have an attention span. It's that we're used to 40-second consumable pieces of content. That's why we have TikTok. That's why we now have YouTube Shorts. That's why we have to get things across in this short amount of time. Because if we don't, we're not tapping into the familiar. What he says, and it's completely changed my life in the last week. I kid you not. He says... He actually did a study where he reached out to his subscribers and he says, I I'm going to I'm going to try to be bored for the next 30 days, a different boring task every single day. It's really funny to think about. And what he says is when you actually deliberately try to be bored, it reprograms your brain so you actually have more endurance. The problem with attention span is not human beings. It's a training you're weak. It's kind of like you are out of shape. You haven't exercised in months. And then you go to the gym and you try to do, you know, 100 pound weightlifting instead of starting off at the 20 pound and building yourself up slowly over time, building that endurance, building that resistance. It's that's that's the state of the whole world. The whole world is in this state. And that's a challenge. Because on one level, as content creators, in order for our content to be seen, we have to somehow convey an idea or a concept in 40 seconds just to be familiar with people. But at the same time, we want people to grow out of that and consume the longer pieces of content. And so in so doing, we need to go through a transformation. So there are three ways that we can go through that. We're going to talk about those three ways today, the three ways to build endurance. And, uh, you know, and Peter, what do you think about that? I mean, it's kind of shocking how much disinformation is out there, how much misinformation is out there, um, and how because of it, human the human mind has now been programmed with these 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 things that um, don't allow us to focus anymore. If we had to survive 
by hunting with a bow and arrow, we simply couldn't do it today because we're so distracted, we can't even pay attention to the environment around us. Back to you, Peter. Uh, Peter, you're muted. So, um, yeah, the big word right now is misinformation, right? Yeah. Um, who decides? Who is the arbiter of misinformation? Who decides what the truth is? And uh, the ultimate uh, barometer of that is you. You have to decide what is the truth. So, everything that's coming at you via the internet, the first thing out of your in, in your mind would say should say something like, "Okay." Let me be skeptical. <laughs> I want to be skeptical. Uh, don't necessarily believe everything you see because it may or may not be true. So you have to validate almost everything. Uh, but when you were saying, uh, Vic, about the 40 seconds, um, I started thinking about, okay, well, what if we have to do a five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute or whatever, uh, or an hour presentation, maybe every 40 to 60 seconds, we have to kind of tweak it a little bit, right? Change the pattern. You know, you're doing something like at, at a low tone and then go to high tone and then go to, low, you know, that every, every 40 to 60 seconds, you have to change that pattern. Otherwise people get bored. And, uh, or maybe I, when I was, um, with John Maxwell, they would talk about, they have a whole speaking section and they showed a chart of when, you, when you're really good at speaking and, and you're, you're doing uh, a whole speaking segment, how the pattern changes every few minutes where you're, you're giving one bit of say um, uh, data or information every few minutes, not all the time. Right. And you interrupt that with a story, personal story or some bit of information. And maybe you lower your voice and up your voice, you know, that type of thing. Like you'll always see like uh, Tony Robbins, he would be, he'll build up. So by the time at the last few minutes of the presentation, he picks up the speed and the volume, and so by the time you're at the end, you're like, "Yeah, <laughs> you know." Yeah, exactly. Right? You don't, you can't maintain that for a whole hour, so you're up and down, up and down, up and down, and it it, it gets the uh, it shakes the brain, it shakes the mind, so this way you don't become bored, and um, so that's kind of a technique. I'm thinking maybe we might want to install in in our longer presentations is to is to break it up a little bit and have uh, all sorts of different things to get people not to be bored and thus being more, uh, so they're more leaning into the presentation of, wow, what's, what's Pete and Vic going to talk about next? Or wow, yeah, yeah. What, what are they going to do next? What, you know, music or a joke or like, we, we like to break it up and, and with jokes and, and, uh, with not taking things so seriously, we have a good time and yeah, we have a good time that that's our shtick and, and we, and that's just who we are. Right. So, um, yeah, so I think that's uh, something that we can uh, integrate with, um, with our presentations is uh, to try to get that 40 to 60 second rhythm and change it up as we go and do our longer presentations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me show you a little bit of that clip without the sound, uh, just to mm -hmm. talk about it for a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the state of our minds today. We are hyper stimulated. Okay. And then you'll see the captions there. We're in a hyper stimulated state. We bounce around between bunch of different objects of attention, mostly with our mobile phones, you know, that's the fellow right there. So if the phone had this impact on my attention span, what if I lowered how stimulated I was even more still? And that's what he did was an experiment. He was not actually doing what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. He did the exact opposite of it. Mm -hmm. Let me explain what I mean by that. This hyper stimulated state that we're in is the baseline normalcy. If we produce content as content creators that simply reinforce that existing state, then we're not actually shifting people mm -hmm. out of that state. Does that make sense? <laughs> so what we need to do is lure people in and say the key points in the first 30 seconds, I'm going to give you an example of another way to do it really simply. See, I, I think what happens is we deep down inside, we want to give people depth. We want to give people breadth. We, that's why we write books, right? But what sells the book? It's the back cover. That's what sells the book, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the, uh, when people open the book, they read the little summary in the, in the um, inside book cover. 
Mm -hmm. And then they read, you know, the back cover inside summary that's, you know, that's like on the, you know, and then the cover design. What catches your first attention is that cover design. It's the same thing with the YouTube video. It's the thumbnail. That's what gets your attention. So what I've been looking at is without changing our behavior too much. In other words, you and I have already put in. Hello, give or take 300 hours of recorded information. <laughs> okay. What can we do to make that information more palatable to people? And the information is, it's really, really simple. The people who learn this, we give them the full breadth of the knowledge because that actually causes them to go deeper into the state of transformation. For, but for the people who haven't yet crossed over the line, we give them a taste, we give them a snippet, we give them a, uh, a little bit of a, um, an insight that looks familiar to them, but then brings them into a whole new world, right? And that's mm -hmm. done through editing. It doesn't need to, you don't have to actually go back through and remake everything. All you have to do is cut out the parts that are not appropriate for a specific audience and then allow the full experience to be inside the members area. And I think that's the trend that we're seeing right now, globally right now. We have people that are doing one minute uh, YouTube shorts. They're doing one minute Facebook videos. They're doing one minute TikTok videos. And then they connect people into their communities where people have a deeper experience and we're all craving that deeper experience. And one of the things he talked about is that as you are okay with being bored, okay, deliberately causing yourself to be bored, it actually increases your endurance and you're able to take in more information. It's because you're so hyper-focused and you're so attention you have so much 40 second consumption. You're flipping, 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 flipping all the time. As soon as you stop flipping, it's like going to the gym. You know, you maybe go in at 20 pounds as your minimum, is your maximum on a certain, you know, pull down. I'm using a very extreme example, but then you go to 40 pounds. And then once you find, wow, 40 pounds is too easy. I'm going to go to 50. 50 pounds is too easy. I'm going to go to 60. But if you go straight in, having not gone to the gym and then go straight to like a hundred pounds, you're going to injure yourself, right? You're going to hurt your muscles. Mm -hmm. and it's building that it's, it, it's retraining the muscle of the brain to be capable of processing information and being able to focus. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that, according to the research is by deliberately shutting off how hyper-focused you are. In other words, shutting off how many distractions you have, shutting off how many times you're checking your phone, resisting the urge every single time, oh, I got to go check my phone, mm -hmm. you know, going for a bike ride and leaving your phone at home, right? Just not being always on. And uh, what he started doing was limiting his phone time to 30 minutes a day. I mean, Peter, could you do that? Let, put away the phone. Okay, for the whole day, except for 30 minutes. That's it. Yeah, it's it's um, I mean, we just kind of discussed this with the the biz op market, the network marketing market. Yep. They're they're very um, they want the super the, the fantastic all the time. And yep. we're trying to give them we're trying to give them gourmet food and they want the fast food all the time. <laughs> right. We're trying to give them hearty content and they want the super and the fantastic. And so that they just skim over stuff and um. We're, we're trying to get them to eat real food, real, real good content. You know what I mean? So Sam said on Facebook, like we're streaming this right now on six Facebook channels and two YouTube channels. So if you want to um, make a comment, please do so. If you want to ask a question, please do so. We will, we will bring it up here on the screen. But yeah, it's, it's not so much the lack of patience. What I'm saying here is it's, it's not even possible for you to be patient anymore right? Mm -hmm. Because patience is boring. And you've been told that boring is bad. 
But what if I told you, and there's now proof that deliberately boring yourself is actually good for your health. It's good for your mind. It allows you to be more focused and you actually will get more done the less you do. Hmm. <laughs> it's almost it's uh, very counterintuitive, right? Yeah. Very very and and yeah, I can I can see it's a it, it's a, a tough pill to swallow for most. You know, so to, like, to to have to go and oh, let me check my phone. Let me check my phone. Let me check. My, you know, I mean, people are used to these um, microwave uh, things that they're doing always so fast and and just never right? really never never really getting anything specific, right? So like you grab a journal, right? Mm -hmm. A grab like I, I I bought this journal at a crafts area, okay, mm -hmm. and that's the first secret we're gonna talk about. It's art, and it has no lines on it, so it allows me to put my thoughts down, and I put circles around them with lines on it, and I'm sitting there, you know, out in a in a place, and I'm designing software this way. I'm designing enhancements to tools and and software that we're building like Sosi Snap and Living Funnels and Search Triggers and our search engine. This is how I do it, right? The best ideas, and you'll see this, that the best ideas will come to you once you, you have eliminated that noise level. And so it was kind of ironic that this guy who wrote this book, he lives in Canada, uh, Chris, um, Chris Bailey. We're going to be talking about him more on Thursday. He he um, he became a productivity consultant <laughs> after he went through this exercise with himself as a guinea pig, starving himself of attention, starving himself of the phone, starving himself. I mean, he he, he had like one of his subscribers. I remember he said that um, go call Air Canada baggage claim department and wait on hold. That was what <laughs> that was one of the exercises. He did. Wow. <laughs> right so deliberately just doing that and what happens is your mind is going to immediately go oh my god I, the, we're taking so long blah 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 and you just observe all of that stuff that's happening so the first secret i kind of gave it to you it's actually art so here's your assignment go to an art museum just look at art and you don't actually go through the museum like you know, it's funny when you go to an art museum, you're going to see some people go through it um, like a fast food express lane. You know, <laughs> they're looking at a piece of art and then they move on to the next one, next one, next one. You can actually time that people will typically stay and look at a piece of art for like 40 seconds. Right. But then you might see someone who will just be looking at a piece of art. They'll be I mean, sitting down and they'll, they'll, they'll sit with it for about four minutes. And when you sit with a piece of art for about four to seven minutes, what starts to happen is you start noticing the nuances. Your mind will start thinking, well, what was that artist thinking about when they made this painting? You start to contemplate. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So art is the first angel, if you will, to get you out of this morass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's really humorous. I mean, if you want to, of course, you can call the baggage claim department <laughs> at Air Canada or your favorite airline and wait on hold. Or you could just simply go to an art gallery and look at a piece of art or just put one image on your screen and contemplate its meaning for like give your, you know, set a timer, make it make sure you do it for like five minutes. What that will do is it will actually cause your brain to rewire itself, allowing you to retain more knowledge. You'll actually become smarter. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and you w whether you know it or not, guys, you can rewire your brain. We talk about that all the time in intentional mentoring. You can rewire your brain if you do specific things like we're teaching you right here is one way to be able to re rewire your brain for uh, for additional focus, you know. Um, but it is certainly possible. And, and unfortunately, so many people are out there with Windows 95 brains right now and they haven't updated their brain and, and updated done an upgrade in their brain for 30 years 40 years right so um you want to constantly reprogram and not fall into the trap of uh getting dummy down by all the different things that are going on right now in society and, and the internet as well too is a big culprit of that 
Yeah, exactly. It's 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 not about microwave income, like we said in the email. Yeah. Physical endurance is the ability to endure the pains of exertion over time mm -hmm. for a greater peak physical prize. Mm -hmm. And see, that's one of the things that's really critical with sales. Most of sales is asking questions, handling objections, and listening to your prospect, as it's called in the industry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, talk about their challenges. And then, you know, ethical salespeople say, well, okay, does my product actually solve their problem? Unethical people mm -hmm. will just try to get the sale no matter what. Well, let's say, let's like when we go into uh, eventually we're all, we're going to be offering a sales masterclass. Yeah. And one of the segments that we, I'm going to talk about in sales masterclass is high ticket closing. High ticket closing is they'll say $500 or more, but I'm really talking about 2000 and up as far as high ticket, that's high ticket closing. And you're not just going to throw something out there and people are just going to buy like this. It's just generally it's not going to happen. You might get lucky once in a while, but you're going to have to have patience. You're going to have to have endurance. You're going to have to ask questions and really get to know your customer and ask them the questions to really solve their problem and listen to what they're saying and the nuances of what they're not saying to be able to ask them the right question to get the right um uh, to be able to give them the right information to have them make an informed intelligent decision as to whether or not your product is going to be right for them and and make a match there and um so that just doesn't happen like that it's not microwave but if you can learn how to be a high ticket closer and to be able to make those types of sales uh, <laughs> i mean write your name on the check your your income is unlimited at that point but it takes skill and technique and knowledge and awareness so when you're talking to people um, to be able to do that, but uh, you can pretty much um, work anywhere and be able to make lots and lots of money if you become really good at that high ticket closing. But it's a skill, yep, and it can be learned. Yeah, definitely. And and uh, your ability to do this digitally is really simple if you actually can follow this um, this what we're talking about here. And I'm going to give you an mm -hmm. example right now. Uh, yesterday, I made a video. Mm -hmm. that solves the problem that I had. And I'm just going to play a little bit of that video for you right now. It's a popular problem that many people have. Watch, watch this video. Transcribe a YouTube video quickly and easily. The simplest way to transcribe a YouTube video is to open an open source tool I love called Audacity. With Audacity, anyone can record audio, for your videos, capture audio from simply playing a video. There are so many things you can do with Audacity. Then you can use any transcription software tools such as SociSnap Pro to be able to transcribe your videos into text. That's what today's video is about, so let's go. So the first thing you'll want to do is head over to audacityteam.org. So basically what I did there is in 30 seconds, see, we tested this. We found if you put that little animation that happens after 30 seconds, in the beginning, people stop watching the video. But if you actually solve their problem and talk about what they searched for, which is how do I transcribe a YouTube video into text? and you give them the answer in the first 30 seconds, now they know that's what the video is about. Mm -hmm. Then you run the animation, and then you run the longer video. Mm -hmm. See, what's missing is that format. When you follow that format, 30 seconds, then the animation that, wow, that reinforces that little dopamine hit. So in the first minute, we already got the dopamine hit, but now we're ready. It's like having a cup of coffee right? You take that very, very key point and then showcase it. I'm going to give you another example in a minute, but why don't you comment on that? And uh, let me go bring up the next one. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's, it, that's exactly what you've been talking about. And um, the, the, even in a longer presentation, like an hour presentation, if you give them kind of a synopsis, okay, today we're going to learn this, we're going to learn this, we're going to learn this, and then you start getting into the presentation afterwards. You kind of give them and, and acknowledge what they're looking for so they know uh, kind of what they're going to learn. And then if you want to do like um, a, 
like an animated introduction or something like that for a short short thing, um, then go into it. But what we've done before is give that animation first, which um, we're finding out is the opposite way to do it. So we should have to have it flipped around. So hey, we live and learn, you know. But we found out that that the other way to do it is much much better, and it is, it's going to grab the person and show them. Okay, acknowledging that this video is going to give me the information I'm searching for. Okay, now I can be patient. I can get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Now watch this one. There's another one I did yesterday. ...to generate 61 billion video views on YouTube. And I'll be honest with you, there's a billion of them. It was just dumb luck. It was. It just, I can't take credit for it. It was just dumb luck. It just happened. We'll put it out there. But 60 billion of them uh, were using the system that I teach in the book. <laughs> uh, you see the you see you see how that makes you want to watch the rest of the video mm -hmm. yeah because all of a sudden like wow 61 billion mm -hmm. views mm -hmm. that guy could teach me something right yep and then i even told you seven minutes earlier so now you know that the video is going to be a maximum seven minutes long mm -hmm. right so you're you go okay i could carve out seven minutes and that's one of the techniques that you can utilize to how it cause people to watch things longer. What do you think about that, Peter? That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I like that. I like that, you know, where it's saying, okay. And I see this a lot of times in movies, but I didn't really recognize it until what you're seeing it here is that they have that, um, you know, a little bit of uh, text in there that shows you a little bit, you know, this happened earlier or we're going forward in time here or something like that. So it, it's a nice addition to um to making a video and it doesn't seem like it if you have the right software it's not that difficult so let's talk about one of the biggest things that you can do is uh your mobile phone when you're working you have you have to first of all have to reframe how you see your mobile phone your your mobile phone is a productivity black hole okay start to see your mobile phone as a productivity black hole in other words it will prevent you from being productive because it distracts you every 40 seconds okay mm -hmm. the only solution for it is to put it out of sight in other words it's not even visible it's shut off it's charging and then what you want to do is get in the habit of deliberately getting all your work done on your phone in like 15 minutes and then enjoy the rest of the day and you'll be surprised you can actually get most of your work done on your phone in 15 minutes let me Vic. you know i i had to drive down to florida yeah and my wife came down with me and we were about uh, 30 minutes out of new york going down towards florida because we're driving and she goes oh my god i forgot my phone Right, I said uh, we ain't we ain't turning back. So <laughs> it's a, it's literally where we had to go was uh, 20, 20 something hours. You know, by the time we stopped and get gas and everything, and then we had to come back again. And she still didn't have her phone, obviously. And I I went and I turned to her when we were parked, and I said, "Don't you feel relieved that you didn't have your phone?" And she says, "Yeah, I feel very relaxed." She says, "No, I can't get to it. It just it just <sighs> right." Cause it's yeah. not within reach. It's not like, Oh, I got to check it. I got to check it. <laughs> you know, it's just not there. You just kind of relax and just let, let it go. Right. Let it go. So it's kind of, kind of a little fun story that of what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And and you had a great time and probably you had more of emotional connection with your wife and, and you yep. had a, you know, you had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, Absolutely. Cause we're not so distracted with the phone and, uh, you know, usually I'm driving, she's on the phone talking or looking and da, 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 you know, so, uh, um, and, and if you take that out of the mix, you actually have conversation. <laughs> so relating this back to the bare necessities song, there's a line in the chorus is look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities, forget about your worries and your strife. I mean, the bare necessities, that's why a bear can rest at ease with just the bare necessities of life. So what we're saying here is focus on the things that are important to you, the things that you love to do. And that first lesson in today's talk is about art. Art could be music. Art could be looking at 
a garden. Art could be just walking out in on a path or the trees, or it could be even driving your car. You could actually think of mm -hmm. driving your car as an art, going for a beautiful drive in the sunset, turning off the radio and just taking it all in. You see, when you deprive yourself, in quotes, of the accustomed normalcy of sensation that everyone is at, you actually expand your brain's capacity to learn. And that's gonna become crucial if and when you decide to join us for the sales masterclass, because if you don't have this, it's gonna be way too much information, too fast, too soon, and you won't be able to process it, and you won't be able to, to, to actually function because you're missing the essential ingredients that are gonna be required of you in order to bring out that performance. Well, Vic, when you, when you start to practice slowing things down, mm -hmm. look at Tom Brady. We, I bring him up all the time, the quarterback, yeah. right? And he, he said, basically, I'm able to see things in slow motion. Even Michael Strahan of the Giants, he said the first two years or so, everything was moving so fast and eventually I got good at it. So I was able to anticipate and everything started to go in slow motion and I can kind of see what things and make decisions based on that. And in sales, if you're able to slow things down, you're able to see the person you're dealing with, okay, even high ticket closing or whatever, you're looking at the person you're dealing with and they're talking, they're mentioning things and you're able to pick out nuances of their story or what they're saying or read between the lines and calculate on what's the best thing to be able to say to them. You're not manipulating, it's ethical sales, but, but you're able to give them the best opportunity to make the best decision for them by giving them the proper information because it's in slow motion for you. And because you practice seeing things in slow motion, but when you're all hyper, this and that, and you're trying to listen to them, but you're also got this on the side and you're, you're like, you're like looking at your phone on out of one eye and you're listening to them over here. You're not going to hear the little nuances that could make the difference between you making a sale and not making a sale or them getting your product and being helped by your product or not being helped by your product because your attention is elsewhere and you're not listening and focusing on what they're doing. And then, using the art of sales to be able to um, give the proper presentation versus a sledgehammer approach and uh, and just let it, you know, well, they well they joined or they didn't join, joined or didn't join. Well, there's a, there's a lot of nuances there if you know what you're doing and you use the art, like you're saying, of, uh, of sales. But that takes, again, skill and practice. And But you can do that. And once you, you're able to do that, the sky's the limit. Yeah, so the thing is, it's the art of sales is not happen from just doing sales. The mm -hmm. art happens from training your brain yeah. to be able to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're, if you're training for a marathon and you're going to be running a marathon, would you go and do a 10-mile run um, if you haven't, if you can't even run a mile, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're running a little bit and also what are you going to do? <laughs> you're going <be> <laughs> right. to be heaving all over the place because <laughs> you're not used to it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And, and, and so what we want to do is, is, is figure out a way where you can expand your mind, expand your consciousness and be able to do that. And art is one of those ways. I'm going to play for you a little musical break here. Is there any sound coming through? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, no, yep. Thank you. 
So I, I wanted to show you that for a reason because you saw how it like in a few seconds it just drew you in. Even the first part was silent. And I oh my medium line, my brain went, there's something wrong here. Is the sound playing? Blah, 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 blah. Even a second of silence, all of a sudden you think, okay, what's wrong? So how many times have you started watching a video and there's no sound? Mm. Right. And then it slowly starts to build. That is what I'm talking about here is the the shock contrast of the deafening sound of silence <laughs> is what we need more of mm. and once we have that then we actually become more productive better salespeople we'll make more money we'll live happier lives and we will be more you know living and breathing and being members of society that are contributing to the wellness of everyone yeah, it's, what do you, think it's, about um, that, huh? you know, it's there's um, <laughs> it's there's there's a, this, the space between <laughs> stimulus and response. Like you get stimulus from whatever you're getting stimulus from and you respond. Right. There's a space in there that that's where everything happens. It's the decision that you make in between whatever stimulate stimulating you and the response that you give. That's what makes us different. Right. And that's what yeah. can make you different from everybody else. It's that middle piece. And what are you going to, how are you going to react to the stimulus and the response? Are you going to blow up? Are you going to be calm? Are you going to be happy? Are you going to be sad? So that, that's the difference. And um, there, there was a book where they, um, in, uh, in Auschwitz, he saw his, he's watching, observing, well, some people are going to their death and they're, they're crying and, and, and screaming, no, not me, everything. And other people are going there with dignity. Right. And he's, what's the difference of these people? So, you know, it's, it's so he's saying that they can't, they can't take that away from me. That, that, that point between stimulus and response is what really, what makes us who we are and how are we going to be able to decide to react and to carry ourselves during that time. Now, um, now you, you morph that into the sales process, the affiliate marketing, it's the stimulus and the response and, and your, that middle ground is the art and, and your training on how are you going to be able to react, to be able to uh, give the appropriate response to the right situation, to the right person, to the right product, to get the best result for both the, both you and them, right? You don't want just the best result for you, you want the best result for both of you, because it's, it's a win-win for, for both of you, right? Because you right. want something that's gonna help them and help you at the same time, and you should, and you, if you do make that together, you should be paid. That's that's what sales is about, and you're, and you're in, and it's the, uh, the law of compensation. So um, if you're able to do that, in, in, in that in-between space, that's where the skill, the training comes from and practice. And it doesn't happen overnight, but but eventually the more you do it, the more everything slows down <sighs> and you're calm and you're able to hear like, like the, what you said at the beginning, wait a minute, it's silent. Is there something wrong? No, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> you know, <that's laughs> yes. right, right. That silence is actually music, right? It's actually the music between the notes, right? right. So um, yeah, it was, it was it was kind of interesting. Cool, cool, cool. So step number two, we're calling the angel of healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, healing, the angel of healing. And um, this is in the second verse of the Bare Necessities song. So let me, let me uh, show you that. Now, when you pick a pawpaw or a prickly pear, ow, right? And you prick a raw paw, the next time beware. Don't pick the prickly pear by the paw. When you pick a pear, try to use the claw. <laughs> what is a claw? Claw is a tool. Mm -hmm. So you need the right tools, right? But when you need to use the claw, when you pick a pair of the big paw paw, have I given you a clue? Golly, thanks, Baloo. And <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of wisdom in that. Mm -hmm. Number one is most people you will meet are suffering, right? Even look at Sosi Snap. What is the headline? It's generated thousands of sales. And my friend in Canada actually wrote the headline for me. We didn't generate any sales until we came up with that headline. Let me show you what the headline is. Look at this, okay? 
struggling with social media posts nobody sees that that one line took us a day two master marketers sitting down for a day trying to come up with it and then we say so snap makes your posts instantly snap sizzle and pop okay well what we're doing is we're aligning with the struggle that people already are feeling and in one sentence we say we have a solution for you right mm -hmm. so healing is crucial to sales healing is crucial to sales because in the process of bringing someone from point A to point B, there's going to be a healing process. And sometimes there's going to be something called a healing crisis. And you want to think of yourself as a doctor, right? You're prescribing a solution to someone based on the problem that they're experiencing. And that's step number two in the, <laughs> the art of entrepreneurship, you know, based on this amazing song right what do you think about that peter awesome yeah i love that that's fantastic that is it's confusing that the way they were talking about you know almost talking in riddles on in that second verse it kind of figure out what he's talking about and um you know but uh, i think it was it's fantastic now, now i want to go watch the movie <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta go watch the movie <laughs> All right, so now the, let's talk about the third secret. And the third secret is actually the secret, okay? It's the secret of the secret. And what, that, what I mean by that is it's knowledge that worked for me. It worked for you, but you probably didn't even know that you had it. You might have done it, but you didn't recognize it. So it's basically that hidden, that hidden um, gift. Let me show you how it looks in the song. Okay. How about scratching that old left shoulder while you're up there? Now just a hair lower. There, right there. Ah, oh, that's it. This is beautiful. That's good. You've got to get to a tree. This calls for some big scratch. Right on it. That's delicious. Oh, cool. Just a little bit. Mm, yeah, too. Oh, man, this is really living. So it's... It's the finding that exact sweet spot, that exact little tiny thing, likening it to Facebook ads, right? Finding that perfect combination of the picture or the video and the headline and the description below and the right balance of the emojis and the font. That's the juice. That's the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen as much as one word. What I kid you not, one word difference in an ad will make or break the ad or just Why a color it? or just a color yeah just or, a color a picture or just a picture or a background a color a position you know somebody yeah. looking left or somebody looking right that's why you have to split test and so the real secret is the split testing it's mm -hmm. testing it and seeing what works and what works is always in relation to another audience right mm -hmm. and so the more that you can cherish little nuggets little secrets that we've learned over the years and we can imbue these in what we do to others. And they say, wow, I tried that and it worked for me too. Like I gave you a couple of secrets tonight. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you more. But one of them is when you finish your video, go record 30 seconds that summarizes the video you just, you just made, right? Put that at the beginning, then put the little animation and then proceed with the rest of the video. Okay. That's something I found that works consistently, 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 consistently over and over and over and over again, over again, because it actually works with the YouTube algorithm in the way that YouTube likes it, right? It holds their people's attention for that 30 second crucial part. The animation and the coolness goes, people have to go, wow, they get a little bit of a hit, they get a rush, and then they can relax into the actual content you're going to deliver them for the next it doesn't matter. Well, wow, you mean I can actually I can actually go into the archive of the hundreds of hours that I've done <laughs> over the years and making videos and then re and recurate it and yep. put the summary at the beginning and then re release it as like a new video. <laughs> it is. It is. And you know, uh I, I taught this in one of our master classes a few weeks ago. Uh Deepak Chopra, 
did this exact same thing. Um, it was it was on a video where the highlight of the video was actually about seven minutes into the video. No one ever actually got to see the highlight of what he said. And so the editor just took that piece, put it in the beginning, and then they um, were introducing the uh, the person whose channel it was, and then they went into the full interview. And that video, the the original video had like maybe 100,000 views, and the the revised one that followed that process, I think has close to 2 million views now. So it's a huge impact. Mm, yeah, that's not even not even minuscule. It's big. Yeah. Very big. It's the exact same content, just structured mm -hmm. slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, last chance to ask questions. And I have another video to share with you today. And we're going to deconstruct this because uh, tomorrow we're going to do a deep dive on this stuff. Hope you can make it. And uh, we're going to be restructuring things uh, in in June as well. So uh, more on that as well coming your way to this channel. So now would be a good time to say, if you got some value from today, please put a like on this video so that we know that you liked it. That also tells YouTube and Facebook and uh, both of our channels that you got some value from today's presentation. And, and maybe Peter, while I bring up this video, you could talk a little bit about your vision for intentional mentoring and what this community is all about. Back to you, Peter. Well, well the, the name intentional means that you're doing things with a purpose. You're, you're just not haphazardly, randomly going through life and, and uh, trying to grow. You're doing things with a purpose. Everything you do, you see, and, and your time during the day, is, is um, being done so that this way you can grow towards whatever stated goal or purpose that you want. So intentional mentoring tends to um, talk and teach about specific topics that are going to get you to that goal. And we cover uh, everything from mindset to personal development to leadership, um, social media things, uh, Facebook, YouTube, all sorts of different things as we are hearing today about one of the topics that we were talking about and literally hundreds of hours of content that we've been able to deliver to people that are not your usual content that you're going to hear everywhere else, original content. And we just, we want to give you extreme value, extreme value so that this way you can take that and be able to um, get to whatever goal that you want to and and have it applied to all facets of your life, not just one. So that's intentional mentoring for you. All right. Thank you. That's great. So let's uh, go into this video. I'm going to show you this is uh, something I did this morning, which is a really great exercise I recommend all of you do. You use the upload audio file with a one minute audio okay now what i'm going to do here is uh, i'm going to make it full screen so you can see it right now okay and this what this does is it in real time it shows you what you spoke what you said and then what i'm going to now do is uh, i'm, I'm going to go through and clean it up you know at a much faster speed so i'm just going to go at 10 speed of what i did but see, what I did here was I took my words, I transcribed them, and then I go over to the YouTube channel. I'm going to show you a little secret here. Just keep watching. I'm going over to my YouTube channel. And so then what I click is duplicate and edit. And there's my entire video transcribed. But the part that's the most important is that first 30 seconds. Right, So I'm scrolling back up to the top and I'm going to replace the text of that with uh, the text that I wrote in SociSnap, okay? So now I paste that in and it's a perfectly written text because that's the part that people are gonna see first and that's the part that has all the keywords because I'm working on the keywords audacity. And then I click view time codes and YouTube magically puts all the time codes in there. Now I click publish. And when I click publish, you're going to now see the video come up. I'm going to bring up the video here 
in silent mode so you can see the video working and you'll see that the perfect captions right below it okay so many people don't do this extra step and this is all in alignment see how can you transcribe a youtube video quickly and easily the simplest way to transcribe a youtube video is an open source tool i love called audacity with audacity by simply playing a video there you can use any transcription software such as Soci Snap Pro to be able to transcribe your videos into text. So all of the keywords that I wanted to focus on are there. And then I have the little animation come in, a like on the video is appreciated. It's not too distracting. It's only a few seconds. So the first thing you want to do is head over to Audacity and use a search, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason I showed you that is it doesn't take long. In that entire exercise to transcribe it, edit it, put it at the beginning took less than 15 minutes. And that's the difference between having no views and having thousands of views or tens of thousands of views. So we're gonna go deeper into the bare necessities of digital marketing. What you need, you need an autoresponder, you need an email list. You need to build an email list. You need to have a mobile phone list. You need to have all these things. And these are all under one tool that we know, like, and love called Builderall. And we're going to do that tomorrow and show you a deep dive on that. So take it away, Peter. That's our show for tonight. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming on. I think you got a lot of great value out of today. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, check like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. So this way you get all the different things that we're, we're, we're dishing out for you. And uh, on behalf of Vic, thank you very much, Vic. Um, you've always been, uh, been great. <laughs> and um, glad to see everybody here. We'll see you on the next video. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.